Welcome to The Hump, the only show that can output 10,000 watts in just two RU. All right, I am joined on the panel today by the lovely Meg. Hi. The effervescent Julius. Fizz pop. (laughs) (laughs) And the wonderful Sophie. Thank you. And uh, before we kick off today, let's have a look at the news. Early Beringer's music group have announced they're closing the Tenoy factory in Scotland and transferring manufacture to China. This follows much of the same with Turbo Sound and Midas. In an era where automation reduces labour costs and Sydney microphone company Rode build microphones for the world in a very high cost base destination, you'd have to wonder why they couldn't invest in England. Nonetheless, that's what they're going to do. Sadly, last week in Melbourne, um, Alia president and lighting designer Rowan Thornton had a heart attack. Fortunately, Rowan is on the road to recovery and he's expected to be back in full health very soon. That's all for now. You seem to do new gear the best around here, so what's happening? All right, uh, in new gear this week, I not only get to introduce a new piece of gear, I get to introduce a new manufacturer, and in particular, an Australian one, which I'm very, very happy about. iMag Systems. Now, iMag uh, are a new manufacturer that have uh, teamed up with an actual Canadian-based technology company called AppDivision to produce Lightning, which is an uncompressed zero-frame latency video over IP system using CAT6A, which is the first of its kind for an Australian product. So Lightning uh, can deliver HDMI video up to 4K resolution together with uh, RS-232 and IR control and gigabit Ethernet over 10 gig networking infrastructure. Now, it's exclusively distributed in Australia and New Zealand through Axis AV, who've uh, also partnered with a company called Uteology, a cloud-based control company that provides 12 months free subscription to their AV as a service offering. So I love to hear about new stuff coming out in Australia, Mm. particularly when, you know, digging stuff out of the ground and growing sheep is uh, probably got a limited lifespan. And the idea that somebody's taking on something as complicated as doing uh, zero latency video over IP in this country is Mm. is good. And nice they include New Zealand in there. Yeah, it's nice. (laughs) It's good. Got to stand together across the Tasman. (laughs) Now, on my radar this week, uh, I learned a new word, Hmm. Antec. Oh, it's antique. Antique technology that's now worth money. And I learned this word because I read that uh, there are now certain VHS cassettes which are worth a fortune. Mm, I believe that. Uh, actually, particularly on, on VS, VHS cassettes, particularly uh, low-budget horror movies that were only ever released in one market and uh, have never been re-released on any other format. Mm. There is a movie called Frankenstein's Castle of Freaks where if you have uh, this VHS cassette in your collection, it can fetch £1,500 wow. in, in Britain. There's another one. Number two is a wonderful production called The Beast in Heat, <laughs> which goes <laughs> for £1,200 the beast on heat. in heat. Oh, okay. The, the top ten are all just these wacky horror movies you've never heard of that got put out on these tiny VHS-only labels, usually in the 70s and 80s, and now are just sitting in someone's cupboard and are worth a fortune. And the other thing I found out is my old iPod Classic, because people love them so much. The big heavy one. Yeah, the big heavy one with, mm. the, with the optical hard drive in it. They're dying a death all over the world because they're, they're ancient now. But if you've got one that still has working parts, they're now actually worth up to twice what you paid for them back when you bought them, you know, like... You know, 2002 or whatever, 2001. So if I go against the grain and not declutter, I can keep all that crap. Yes. It could actually be worth something, and that's my excuse for having a mess. Yes. Because I'm trying to hold on to it. Videos, CDs. I reckon CDs will be next. People like (laughs) Jimmy. Like Jimmy. Jimmy. What would Jimmy say? What would Jimmy say? Jimmy would say you're doing it wrong. Who's Jimmy? (laughs) God. He's yes. omnipresent. He is. He I just is. find it offensive you're saying CDs will come back in. When did they go? <laughs> Sorry, you didn't get a memo, did you, mate? She's still <laughs> using Sorry. them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Metallica being from the Bay Area, especially myself, like to hook up with people who are local. Needing a smaller wedge for travel reasons, still keeping the same sonics of the giant Metallica sound was a challenge, but not for Meyer, it seems. Very pleased with uh, you know, the duties of guitar and vocals uh, coming through the same wedges, needing to have clarity in both, and this is, this is what happens with Meyer, so. When I was designing the lighting for my eight-hour meditation on the nature of tungsten halide, Sebzen Yarn in I'm Klein, I'm Schrank, I was heavily inspired by the tiny little light in my fridge. It poses the perfect existential question. When you close the door, does it stay on? I wanted my audience to find this out firsthand, so my solution was clear. Every audience member is locked in their own fridge for the eight-hour duration of the show. Now, my critics point out that the dozens of deaths that were caused were completely avoidable. But I take pride in the fact that they met their demise while solving mankind's last great philosophical mystery about the true inner nature of white goods. All right, my friends, now we're talking about inappropriate gigs, mm. which uh, my pet peeve would be, have to be a dance concert Ugh. where we've got little girls dancing around in next to nothing with inappropriate dance moves. And you guys have to film it. And um, yeah, I haven't, had to, it? I haven't had to work on one, but, you know, it was... You know. That's just my luck, really. But, you've, I mean, you've been exposed to a few of these things. Anything Cringe. dance mums, anything involving tap dancing... <laughs> Anything involving children, <laughs> generally. Don't want to film this. Generally, no. don't want to be there. No. No, I just, um, just the, the songs that they dance to, they probably don't even know half the meaning to anyway and the way they're dressed. It's like, uh, it's just trashy and there's, uh, uh, I'm just glad I've got sons. Mm. Just so I, I just couldn't stand it. Anyone that says, <laughs> oh, I've got my, dan my daughter's dance concert, I just think, you poor thing. Stay clear. Mm. Yeah, it's so true. So, so if you obviously nuns, never did. You obviously never were in a little girly dance group when you were little. No, I, I had to do a few that I actually turned down. Mm. I'm like, I'm not going to wear that. I don't really? Yeah, yeah. It's good to have standards. That's right. So, have you ever been in an inappropriate situation where you had to film a gig? Uh, I've, I've worked on a couple of things that I very strongly objected to, but uh, nothing that nothing that was sexualized, which was good. But um, you know, I, I, walk, I worked for a, a couple of very large mining companies that I very strenuously objected to what they were saying on stage, mm. and I very much had the finger hovering oh, over, yeah. the, over the mute button, just oh, going, "Oh, I'd love to shut this guy down." Like political rallies. You yeah, know, when you really can't stand what you're listening to. Yeah, you did a few of those. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, it's just no fun at all. Yeah, yeah, and you, you, you're fighting every instinct to, to shut it off. Yeah. yeah you, it's almost like you're supporting you it by rent. being there. Yeah, yeah. And it, that's yeah, exactly. the hard thing. Like, you don't know. I don't know, there's a performer, a jazz performer, who loves his music, but then he starts going political, and it's like, I don't know whether I want to go and see you because... The political stuff is becoming more and more prominent over yeah. his music, and oh. it's, it's such a shame. I don't. I want to. <laughs> the whole topic about um, musicians that become political, mm. like you too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gets a bit tiresome. Very boring. I think with inappropriate, it could also be with um, editing as well. You know, mm. if your director or your boss is telling you to get certain cuts or ha have this certain shot in that you're yeah. like, that's yeah. inappropriate. I didn't want to put that in, or what they're saying on shows like you know. 
Big Brother or these live reality TV shows. Mm. It's like, but the more controversial or the more explicit or the more sexualized, you know, do, does it get more hits or views or Probably. Totally. something just boring mm. and But boring. there's a person on the other side. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I, if like Big Brother, you're there. 24-7 yeah, to big be brother, seen. Bad um, example. <laughs> you know, and I guess the editing can make something that was simple into something that's not. But I don't mm. know. It just, um, I think it's hard if you're getting paid to do a gig and it, mm. it, it goes against your grain. Yeah, but then you've got the mortgage and the food to pay. Indeed. So it's... Mm. Mm. All right. And moving on from that cheery topic, we're going to have a look at what's in Gearbox this week. This is an interesting hybrid, sort of, of point source and line, uh, if I can explain. Uh, okay, you need to throw sound a long way, which is the whole point of the HK Audio uh, Linear 5 LTSA, which is the top box here. Um, so let's say, you know, you're, you're trying to do a mid to large size crowd. You've got two options. You can have a really long waveguide, you know, long point source, or you can have a line array. So either way, one big box this way, which gets a bit inefficient and distorted, or lots of boxes, lots of rigging, lots of, you know, gear, lots of people, lots of time. Um, what the uh, LTSA seeks to do is sort of go between both. It's over, it's done, it's dusted, we are leaving. Thank you very much for watching The Hump. We'll see you all next week.